Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Village of Gurney Planning and Zoning Board meeting for this Wednesday, September 7th, 2016. Could we have a roll call, please? Bow? Here. Crawford? Here. McFarland? Here. Nordentoff? Here. Paff? Here. Pasiak? Here. And Sula? Present. Uh, we do have a quorum. If everyone would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, the next, item on the, the next item on the agenda is an opportunity for public comment from anyone who would care to make a comment about something or ask a question about something that is not on the agenda this evening. Okay, I'll close the floor to the public on that item. Uh, next item is the approval of our minutes from the meeting that was held on August 17th. Um, I did have one minor correction in the section here where we talk about... Um, whether or not we could um, 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 make an amendment to the to the zoning ordinance for the deficiency that Mr. Ziegler noted, um, it, it says no amendments may be made to the C6 zoning standards. I think we should put at this time or at this meeting, as it, otherwise it sounds like never. Okay. okay. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? If not, a motion to approve as amended per request would be in order. So moved. Move, motion by Mr. Second. Nordentoff, second by Mr. Was that Mr. Paff or Mr. Paff? That was me. Mr. Paff, okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Uh, motion carries. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for Warren Township uh, for a zoning map amendment and a special, u special use permit at 79 South Delaney Road. Tracy, do you have a staff report? Um, sure. Uh, this is a con Are these on? I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a continued hearing from uh, about a month ago. Uh, the township has amended their petition. Um, specifically, they are seeking to rezone and um, a rezoning and a special use permit for the eastern 73.9 feet of 79 South Delaney Road. Um, this is an amendment. Um, previously, they were um, seeking the rezoning and a special use for the eastern 160 feet of the property. Um, the amendment results in the addition of 25 parking spaces instead of 51 proposed at the August 3rd um, meeting. Um, there's one thing that I want, would like to just clarify before turning it over to the applicant, and that is that um, the parking on this site, it does not conform to the current code. Um, due to historical circumstances over the past 20 plus years, um, parking on this site is legal non-conforming. Um, in addition, with code changes that we've made in 2015, um, it's become even um, less compliant. Um, in 2015, we changed the office parking code um, to be from, uh, we used to calculate it based upon gross square footage and now, I'm sorry, on net square footage, and now it's calculated on gross square footage. In addition, for office, um, especially government office, it went from a one per 300 to a one per 250 square foot requirement. Um, also, the petition tonight will bring the site into conformance with the current codes. Um, so at this point, I think I'll turn it over to the petitioner. I'm sorry, what? I, I want oh. to say something. Okay. First. Okay. Um, as, as this particular meeting is a continued public hearing, um, anything that was, uh, uh, t uh, any testimony that was given in the prior meeting is considered incorporated by reference. So there, there's no need to, to repeat anything that was said at the last time. At the last meeting, we should focus on anything that's changed or has been revised. Um, I would request that anybody that intends to give testimony or ask questions to please stand up and be sworn in by the village attorney. Uh, that's great. You can just rise and uh, raise your right hand. Even if you think, yeah, if you're, even if you're not certain you're going to um, present a comment, it's probably easier just to to uh, get sworn in all all at, all at the same time. 
Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, you may be seated. Okay, thank you, Brian. All right, at, at this time I'll turn the floor, the floor over to the uh, representatives of Warren Township. I guess we're working. Good evening, welcome back everyone. Uh, my name's Bob Massini, I'm an attorney who was here last time, as you recall, and I'm here again tonight on behalf of my client, Warren Township. You heard Ms. Velcover indicate that uh, the township has amended its petition uh, for what it's requesting here. Uh, the township heard what you all had to say last time, frankly. Uh, it reviewed the objections that were filed with the village board and I presume will continue to be on file with the village board by your attorney. And uh, so in a nutshell, uh, to let everyone know what we're doing and I trust that most of the uh, commission members know already, uh, initially what the plan called for was 160 feet, the east 160 feet of the subject property becoming incorporated into the 01 district and part of the existing special use permit to provide additional parking. What the township uh, had proposed to do and was to create a passive park on the west side of the property, the remaining part that is the corner of Delaney and Oglesby. Uh, it was very clear last time that uh, although we thought, the township thought a park might be a nice idea, it was not a nice idea to the members of the neighborhood. So I, I hope it's good news that you are hearing that the request now has nothing to do with everything west of the 74 east feet of the subject property. It is going to remain, as it always was, an R3 designation. The house that is there is going to remain there. It's going to be fixed up internally so that it can be rented out by the township. Uh, so it will be just like having a neighbor in any one of your homes. Uh, as indicated, the new parking area, which is part of this east 74 feet, is going to contain um, 25 additional parking spaces. Now, I might point out that the R3 lot that's going to be uh, resulting from the township not doing anything to it, frankly, from looking at the tax maps, it's as large as probably all but a, just a few of the R3 lots in the current neighborhood. Uh, <coughs> additionally, one of the things that the planner uh, that was here and testified last time was something about the lines of where everything was lining up. And while I suggest that I did not agree with his level of mathematical precision on where those lines should go, I'm happy to let you know he made his point and the R3 lot that is going to be there uh, pretty much lines up with the three R3 lots on the south side of Oglesby. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, and it's real close, I think we might extend, the, or the township slot might extend actually further to the east than the R3 lots on the south side of Oglesby. So at least on those things, hopefully that is uh, responding uh, to a concern. One of the other things that was brought up at the last meeting was a concern about lighting. Uh, Mr. Hill is here again tonight, and he will speak to a relocation of the one, uh, the one light feature that's going to be there. If my memory serves me correctly, uh, commissioners, in the initial plan, I think there was, there were, uh, you're going to end up with two light poles or light fixtures in the parking lot. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was the village's concern to have lighting, uh, but the plan now is because of the reduced space, the current light post is going to be relocated to the south and west of its current position. My understanding is from consultation with the village, that at the time that that particular 22-foot pole, one 250-watt bulb, was put in back in 212, it registered 0.1 to 0.3 maximum candle readings at the north property line of the township's property. Uh, that was well within code. Uh, I have not heard at any time in the testimony 
from the neighborhood or from my conversations with the village that there had been any complaints about that light over the past four years. I'm happy to say the same light will now be further south and further west of any of the R3 properties in your neighborhood. Consequently, if it wasn't a problem before, it's going to be less of a problem now. Uh, Mr. Hill, there will be uh, landscaping, of course, put in around the parking lot, as was mentioned last time. Mr. Hill will speak to that in his comments. Uh, there were concerns expressed about drainage by some of the people, and while I don't, I think everything that has been looked at indicates that there really was no drainage issue, um, he's going to speak briefly to drainage and, and uh, I think a new storm sewer is being put in on the, internally on the property. And he's going to make a few comments about uh, traffic uh, uh, with respect to this. Additionally, to hopefully put you all further at ease, uh, I have talked to Mr. Ziegler and it is my client's uh, intention to administratively take, if they do get the approval from the village board, for what they are proposing now. They are going to take uh, the necessary administrative steps to essentially combine our, west, our east 74 feet that's going to be part of the <coughs> parking lot with the property to the east of there where the building is so that it's all one piece. None of this is subdivided, so it, uh, whatever the county requires to get it done, it's going to be done if we receive the approvals. Additionally, and uh, there is going to be the one access point to the new parking lot, which will be uh, as far east as practicable. And I know it hasn't been brought up previously, but in the discussions internally with my client and I, if it is something that the village would like to see and the neighborhood, uh, my client has no problem with putting a no right turn sign at that access point uh, so that people won't make the mistake of getting lost in your neighborhood uh, because we want them to go the right way to get out. So hopefully that will be something that if, it, uh, if the board sees fit to, to make that as a recommendation, that is something that my client is certainly uh, more than willing to do. Uh, so with that, I'm, I've concluded my remarks and I'll turn it over to Mr. Hill. Thank you, Bob. My name again is Tom Hill. I'm with Erickson Engineering and I'm the civil engineer on the project. Uh, as Bob has said, this new plan is changed in that it is respectful of the single family home. And we came about sort of our geometrics here by maintaining a 30 foot backyard off of the deck. Uh, we had discussed this with a realtor and she thought that would be uh, of, of benefit to keeping that house as a separate structure by giving it a full yard. And again, the area of this is conforming with the local zoning and it is larger than a number of the other lots in the area. We are adding 25 spaces to this, which is less than we had asked for previously. We have special events that happen sometimes once a month or once every couple months, training sessions and other sorts of uh, clinics where we will get vehicles in excess of an additional 30, up to 60 additional vehicles. For those sorts of events, we are going to have a deficiency. And that is something that the township has chosen to accept and that is reflected in the plan that we have here today. Typically, our parking needs the peak, and they do vary. Sometimes they are less, but they can be as high as 46. And that does not account for a few additional buses that might come. That number can vary between one to five, and it also does not account for uh, minor meetings that our uh, local representative or senator may have here as well. So we are asking for a total of 54, which we believe is adequate to meet our general day-to-day -day needs, but not adequate for those large special events but that's an issue that we will have to, have, the township will have to deal with. The landscape plan includes all the, the appropriate screenings and buffer protections against neighboring areas. We are installing an eight foot fence along the very northern part of our site at the very western edge abutting the adjoining residential lot. So we're installing an eight foot fence there and a six foot fence along the entire new west property line. 
We are additionally adding uh, rows of arborvitae and other assorted bushes and trees and internal trees in the parking lot islands in accordance with the municipal ordinance. There are uh, a few existing trees on the office property. They are predominantly green ash, and I think one or two of them might be dead. Um, but those are trees that will be, have to be removed as a part of this project, and we will conform with you know, all of the landscaping requirements associated with that. Um, Bob has spoken a little bit to lighting. We are not proposing adding any new light fixtures. We are simply going to relocate one existing light to a more appropriate location in the center of the parking lot. That coupled with the fencing and the additional screening, we think should be uh, a pretty good, make a pretty good effort to avoid impact to the neighbors. Drainage was uh, a comment that, that came up at our last meeting as well. And a couple people had spoken of possibly a drainage swale or a creek running through our property. And all of you have an exhibit in your handouts showing the existing drainage patterns, including one foot contours. That shows the watershed and how much area actually drains across our property. There is positive drainage across that. And this is a swale not very dissimilar from what you see between homes in residential subdivisions. It has positive drainage, and that water drains out to the storm sewer in Oglesby. As a part of the proposed condition, we are going to install a storm sewer across our parking lot. We will have a new catch basin installed at the north property line to help intercept those flows and make sure that we are conveying the full 100-year flood appropriately at the same elevations out to Oglesby. We will additionally be providing water quality treatment to help treat the water coming off of this parking lot and we will also not be increasing the rate of stormwater discharge from this property. Detention is not required for a project of the size. Nevertheless, we are going to take this to the step of not increasing the discharge rate so there are no adverse effects to the surrounding property owners. And additionally, with the issue of traffic, as we had discussed at the previous meetings, there are no expansions of the projects being offered by the township. These our patrons are people who are already here and are very often parking in the office building on the south side of Oglesby and sometimes parking in the building to the north. And during uh, when it gets dark, when there's snow on the ground, we have people that have to walk across conditions that you know, are certainly not ideal and may have some safety issues. But we are not increasing the traffic in the area. And as Bob said, we're willing to... Uh, work with the municipality to potentially sign this so that there are no right turns into the subdivision coming out of here. We don't believe that will be a problem because the subdivision is not a cut through subdivision. If somebody goes that way, believe, believe that driver has probably made a mistake and will turn around promptly. But we are certainly willing to try to help work with the neighbors to control the traffic in that way and ask that the municipality, if they are willing, to enforce that. Thank you. Is there anything else? I think the one thing I just want to clarify, the drainage, uh, just so everybody understands, the, the new drainage uh, storm sewer that you're going to be putting in, when you referred to the north property line, Tom, you're referring to the, to the northern corner of the current property, correct? So this, this is going to be put in on property that the township already owns, uh, and is already used as a parking lot, but it will serve to handle the drainage both from the existing parking lot area and from the new parking lot area. And it will kind of run just to the, I think just to the east of the existing property line, which I'll remind everyone will be leaving if the township gets its approval because we'll see that they get combined in a way uh, so that it will no longer be a, uh, an issue at all. And additionally, I think the number... Uh, you might have indicated about two times a month that there are uh, uh, the traffic, or not the traffic, but the quantity of people coming to the place is over uh, capacity. Actually, it's only about seven or eight times a year that things get to that point. Uh, th thank you. Um, first, I'd like to make a comment. I'd, I'd like to thank the township for um, listening to concerns and addressing the concerns um, as you've demonstrated so far, and greatly improving the quality of the materials that we had to review ahead of time, and I appreciate that. Um, any questions or comments from members of the zoning board? 
Mr. McFarland. Just a couple. Um, the uh, the house that's remaining, it, if I just want to confirm you're thinking that you'll, it's going to remain our three, so it'll be rented or possibly sold as a residential property. If you can keep the microphone with whoever's talking, that, that helps. Uh, us. The current plan is it would be rented because it is a single family home and that's what it is in a single family district. Uh, in the future, you know, who, who can predict? It's possible it could be put on the market. But that, that was, as, as Tom, I believe, indicated in his, his comment, there was a discussion, uh, obviously they looked into it, to find out what would keep it desirable. And that 30-foot right. backyard apparently is, is something that would keep it desirable. Okay. One other question. On the, you mentioned an 8-foot fence across the northern uh, piece. How far does that fence extend from the northwest corner of the property? It's shown on the map, but... I, I'm not clear on how far east it goes. Yes, it extends from the northwest corner and extends to the east to the property line, the ah, dividing point between so about the... about 30 feet. Yes, between the residential and office okay. uh, parcels. All right, that makes sense. So it's going to shield that neighbor? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> That's all I got, Jim. Okay, any other questions, comments from members of the Planning and Zoning Board? Mr. Bow? We have a question, and actually this is for the petitioner and for... Tracy, our staff report references a, a bus pad to be constructed. Oh, yeah. David knows yeah. more about on a, it. On a separate note of, from comments from the last meeting, uh, the township has applied for installing a bus pad uh, between the sidewalk and Oglesby near the intersection but that's completely unrelated to this project. No, I, under I understand that, but I think it's for the benefit of the public here sure. since they were the ones, you know, who had an issue with this before. Can you show us just generally on that map maybe the, the general location of where this is going to be? So it'll be in the village right away. In the village right away, correct. Right. Okay. Anything else, Brian? And then my other question is, you know, concerning the shifting of this lat line, we're going to have, you know, Part of, the, part of the current lot is going to be zoned R3, and then portion of it's going to be rezoned office. Is, why aren't we just going to have them do a plat of subdivision to combine their, all of their office? They're, they're going to do that. Okay. There, it, there's an administrative process to do that, Okay. Um, and they are committed to doing that, and okay. that can be one of the, the conditions that you place okay. upon the approval tonight. Okay. So the goal would be to have two separate lots? Yes. With well, the lot line. Keep, keep the two separate lots okay. that are now, just relocate that lot line, that devising, dividing lot line to the okay. same location as the zoning line. Okay. okay. Any other questions? <coughs> okay, at this time I'm going to open the floor to the public, and I'd, I'd like to start with Mr. Capetta, because uh, I understand he's representing the neighborhood. Um, so, Mr. Capetta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in addition to being retained to represent Maryland. Sullivan resides at 59 North Delaney. Oh, excuse me. Is that microphone on? I mean, I... Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now it is. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It, it didn't sound like it was coming through. Maybe I wasn't sitting close enough. I they, they, they don't seem as hot as they normally are. <laughs> okay. In any event, in addition to representing Marilyn Sullivan, who lives on Delaney, I also am representing the 55 people who signed petitions, and I provided you copies of the names and addresses of those individuals. I'd written to them, and although I was retained by Mrs. Sullivan, they've agreed that the comments I make are on their behalf also. We were advised at noon today that there was a change in the plat and in, in the plan, and I appreciate that, but we've not had the opportunity, of course, to review it. I did receive papers this evening, and I did receive some papers earlier today, as I said, at noon, but we haven't had an opportunity to really delve into them. Um, it's certainly apparent to us that many positive steps were taken as a result of the comments we made, comments that the board made, comments that the public made, and we're certainly appreciative of those changes, which include lighting concessions, and most importantly, replatting this so those lots can't get divided improperly. <clears throat> so, and it appears that the water retention is being dealt with, and, and, and that's good. But we are dealing with a special use permit, and the reason for that is because Many conditions occur in these special projects that require conditions, and so we'd like to talk about some possible conditions that could be considered in light of all of the things that go on in the government office. Um, 
one of the conditions that we're concerned about is the use of that parking lot. And at one time in the earlier presentation last month, it appeared to us that it was mentioned by the township that they didn't have the intention to use it late in the evening and times like that. So we'd like to have considered the possibility that it be chained closed at 10 p.m. each night or holiday Sundays, some kind of schedule to help reduce the likelihood that it becomes a place where people can park when they really don't have a need to be there at all. So certainly that could be a condition that we could establish, you could establish in a special use permit that's involved here. Um, also, uh, unfortunately, I'm sure from everybody's point of view, the tree ordinance was violated, but I understand that the, by, by the township when they cleared trees off, and I did have a conversation with the village and they explained to me that they believed there were certain exemptions that applied. Uh, however, um, I, I would ask that as a condition for this particular special use that, a, uh, that the tree ordinance be strictly enforced regarding the recent unpermitted removal of trees by the township and that exemptions based upon dead or dying materials be established by a sworn detailed affidavit provided by a licensed and registered arborist. I was told that there were some large number of ash trees on that property. I have other people shaking their heads, no, I'm not an arborist, I don't know. We do have extensive photographs of the property, and so we certainly will have the opportunity to examine what an arborist might do. So to the extent they were exempt, so be it. To the extent they weren't exempt, then, then the tree ordinance should be enforced appropriately, it seems to us. Um, the, the property at 79 Delaney, which is the parcel not involved in this hearing, but it is the parcel that the trees were cleared from, and until tonight was part of the previous petition, since that property has been cleared of trees, we have concern about what's been left now as the residue as between that parcel and Mrs. Sullivan's parcel. And so we'd like to ask the township to consider the possibility of doing something along that border to reestablish the kind of area that was there before the removal of those trees, which was, by the way, unpermitted. And therefore, it seems to me they should participate in restoring that property in some reasonable way. <coughs> um, I, I do have a concern, and I did read tonight, I hadn't seen it before now, I did read the parking report that was provided this evening, and, and I'm not sure that it's clear in that parking report what the utilization or the use demands are. They don't seem to be based upon the programmatic use of the property. They seem to be based on the fact that it's an office building with a standard number of parking spaces per government office. And it seems to me it should be governed more by the programs that are there. And certainly there should be a way to have an industrial engineer or somebody quantify the number of programs and the number of uh, participant days used to make sure that the use of that facility remains constant from now forward. Now at the last presentation we were assured by the township supervisor, I think that's what our position was, that there was not any expansion of the programs. But it seems to me the baseline should be established in the special use permit so we don't have this question in future days as to whether it's an expansion or whether it's whatever was originally anticipated. Um, also, and, and this is a technical matter, but we're a little perplexed by it. The proposed change that we saw provides for a 10-foot interior side yard requirement. Mr. Ziegler has been very kind and has tried to explain it to me. I'm having difficulty with it because I read a footnote uh, on page 12-7 of your Gurney zoning ordinance, which suggests to me that it requires a 30-foot interior uh, uh, space. It's called a buffer in your, in your uh, ordinance. So I, I, I think the way it's written, maybe not the way it's intended, but the way it's written, that requires a 30-foot buffer. And in that buffer, your footnote says, no parking is permitted and it has to be kept open. So I, I question that. I haven't had an opportunity to research it. 
Mr. Ziegler was very kind to spend time with me, but, but I haven't clarified it in my mind. I don't think I've clarified it in his mind. And uh, so we have concern about that, and I want you to be aware of that. Just, so just, those are my, just, oh, I'm sorry. Just so I understand that particular question. So you're questioning the setback between paved parking and the lot line and the parking lot portion? I, I think between the, I don't have a direction on this, but I think the top is north in this case. Okay. Between the north boundary of the new lot as redesignated okay. and coming down southerly, I think there's a requirement that there be a 30-foot buffer in your uh, zoning code. Okay, so we're talking on the parking lot side, the, the, the setback where, or where buffer. It, where it's next to the R3, not where it's not next to the R3. And so here they've shown a 10-foot. So what's proposed to be the, the expanded 01? <coughs> yes, okay. Okay. Yes, in okay. the expanded 01. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Okay. I just want to make sure we're talking That's about why I time. brought a competent lawyer with me to help me <laughs> understand it. Okay, thank you. A anyway, those are our initial comments. I, I may later come back, if you don't mind, and cross-examine if it becomes necessary, depending on how this goes. But th that's what I have to say for my opening okay. comments, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to make them. And, and, and please uh, don't hesitate to raise your hand if you feel we haven't uh, addressed one of your concerns. Thank you. Okay. Are, is there anyone else from the public that cares to make a question, uh, ask a question or make a comment? Uh, yes. Uh, where's the roving microphone, please? Thanks. Okay. Hi. Good evening. Uh, has the village Excuse taken... Me, you need to state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, uh, my name is Andrew Humlock. I live at 4151 Jeffrey Avenue, Gurney, Illinois. Uh, my question is with regards to the additional programs, uh, apparently there was a, a flyer that went around that talked about there was going to be parties, DJ parties and things like that, um, <clears throat> that we weren't aware of at the last meeting. I don't have a, an e example with me, but my question is I understand that... Uh, this uh, facility has a sister organization on Almond uh, Avenue. Uh, with regards to the additional programs, what type of uh, um, studies or analysis did you do to see if you could have those, these additional uh, programs at the other facility, given the fact that uh, it could accommodate the additional uh, members that come and show up? Thank you. And just so I understand, this, this flyer, is this something that came through the neighborhood or is this something that came from the township? Uh, I believe it uh, came through the township. I, I saw it from another neighborhood, showed it to me, and, and so um, I'm not really sure what the original source was, but it, was, it had the township information on it. Okay, thank you. Any other members of the public that would care to make a comment or ask a question? Yes, sir. You can. How you doing? I'm Marty Clem, 4137 Jeffrey Avenue. I'm just curious. They've already cut down 54 trees. If they extend that parking lot to the west 30 feet, there's only like six remaining trees there. So that means we've lost every tree all the way down. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. I won't need that. Okay. You, you, sir, you do. Very good. You do. Uh, you do. Uh, you do. Yeah, okay. yeah, because the Hi. meetings are recorded, and if you don't use the okay, microphone. I understand. Then, okay, I understand. It's just that i got a big mouth. <laughs> and I'm not an attorney. You can tell I'm not wearing a suit. Um, my name's Dan Connolly, 4157 Washington Street. I had a couple of questions that were mentioned. Um, north is the um, those medical buildings. What are the... This, the yeah, I, would, I, th I would think it's a lot cheaper to build um, a walkway, driveway, adjacent um, to the property uh, rather than expanding this parking lot. I, my big question always was, why more parking in the first place? I understand and heard that, you know, supposedly special events and so forth, but I could understand if they went up and the, the building expanded and X amount of more employees were going to report to work on a daily basis on a nine to five. But if these are for you know, special events, certainly the parking lot to the south and the parking lot to the north could be accessed and made safe during the winter rather than expanding and building um, a whole new parking lot. I, that's just my, my concern and my issue. Um, I'm also not very 
thrilled with how this all happened. Um, uh, the manner in which it was done, uh, they were out there cutting down trees and then literally hours later they were grinding the stumps. Um, I've never seen work that fast before. It felt to, to me as, as a neighbor that this was sort of being done quickly behind our backs. Um, this is not a very settling feeling, I think, for anybody in the neighborhood. So um, I'm wondering if there is any research or, or contact with uh, the parking lot neighbors to the north and, of course, the parking lot that already exists that has a very safe, shovelable, saltable walkway for people to park for special events. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hi. Virginia Dornick, 40 South Delaney Road, Gurney. My comment is, is that prior to their, as they were proposing this new parking lot, um, they had been offered, Suzanne Simpson was contacted personally by my father wanting to buy the property of the house. And uh, he understood that it was two separate properties. He knew the Andersons who had passed away and knew what their wishes were prior to their passing, which was not to allow the parking lot to be expanded. He sold the property initially to the uh, owners prior to the township buying the property. So he contacted Suzanne Simpson and said, I would be interested in purchasing the house property. She never responded and now Mrs. Sullivan has also offered that same condition of that property to no avail. I mean, you're giving, you're being given some solutions to that property and now you want to fix it up and rent it out. It, it just doesn't make sense. When you've got people who are interested in keeping it and fixing it up themselves and keeping it part of the neighborhood without being a rental. Thank, thank you. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> uh, Bill Ebensorter, 130 South Delaney Road. Um, similar to what one of the other neighbors asked, have all the other options for parking been explored prior to this property being purchased and planned for development of a lot? Is there someone that could answer that? Uh, the way the process works, uh, we receive all the questions from the members of the public, and then we then we go back and we try to address them in mass. So, uh, if you could just bear with us, we'll we'll get to your question, but just not right this minute. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments from members of the public? All right. We'll go back to. The, the zoning board and staff to uh, address some of the uh, address the questions. The the, the the biggest one, and probably the most emotional one, is is the tree is the issue with the tree ordinance and the tree removal. Can can someone okay. shed some light on that? I I will be happy to. Um, Supervisor Simpson did come into our office um, and talk to one of our clerical staff. Typically, for residential lots, subdivided residential lots they are exempt from our tree preservation ordinance. This one is not a subdivided lot. This is a meets and bounds lot, which is unique in our community. Our staff errantly told them that they were exempt from the, the woodland preservation ordinance. That being said, they took steps, moved forward to uh, remove the trees from the site. Upon discovery that that work was being done, we took a hard look at it and yes, it did not meet the exemptions from the uh, Woodland Preservation Ordinance. We contacted the township. They have since applied for the permit. Uh, they gave us an inventory of all the trees that were on the site uh, that were uh, removed by the contractor that they had hired, as well as the species and a general condition of each of the trees. The vast majority of them were ash trees. Um, as everybody knows, the emerald ash borer has, you know, wreaked havoc throughout our community on ash trees. 
We do have some photographs um, that were provided by the contractor <coughs> as well as some photographs when we put up the, the public hearing sign that you can see there are a number of dead, diseased, you know, dying trees. Um, at this point, in taking the, uh, the contractor's word as to what the, the trees were, we did go through and determine the replacement values for those trees. Those are implemented in the current landscaping plan in addition to the required buffer trees. Okay. So they have been accounted for um, as part of the landscaping plan for this project. And mind you, our, our woodland preservation ordinance doesn't, um, you know, it allows for the removal of trees, but it also allows only if you replace them. It doesn't prevent the removal of, let me rephrase, it does not prevent the removal of trees. It allows you to remove trees, but uh, provides a replacement schedule based upon the size of those trees. So with the now applied for and received tree removal permit, using the information, the best information that we had that was provided by their contractor, we believe that the proposed plan would be in conformance with the uh, tree preservation ordinance. So it, it, it meets the spirit of what the ordinance was intended yes. to do. Okay. Um, there were some questions on, on parking. Um, my understanding of the, of the, from the testimony that the, the additional parking brings the building into compliance with existing code. It brings it into compliance with general office. Okay. It does not bring it into compliance with government office. Government office would require, <coughs> I think, 69 or 68 parking spaces, so they'd still be shy. Okay. And the, um, the setback issue in terms of between paved parking and, and the lot line. Yes. and. Mr. Capet and I had a discussion on this just prior to the meeting, and I may have an answer for him. The 30-foot setback is a principal building setback for the office zoning district when it is adjacent to residential. The parking lot buffer is the 10-foot required green space that is required between parking lots. So our new code is a little bit, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but based upon the definitions of setbacks that are in the code, those are between principal building and property line, which is what the 30 foot that he referred to within the buffer section, the landscape buffer section, which is between the parking lot and the property line. That is just a 10 foot. Okay. Um, can, can anybody shed any light in terms of the, this issue of the flyers? I mean, is that something that, that came from the, the township or is that <coughs> something that came through the neighborhood or, I mean, if the, the flyers that talked, that allegedly talked about expanding programs. I've got to tell you, when we were here last time, we did a whole lot of, and even in the petition that they presented you with about okay. barbecues and all the rest. I think it was pretty clear in the testimony that was presented last time that there are no special events of the nature of what was being suggested by the one questioner. And, and my client was very clear on that last time. They indicated that they do have special needs adults who have in the lower level of this particular building, sometimes outside on the patio, they do cook a barbecue and those people can go in and out of the building and sit in a, uh, a I guess for lack of a better term, a lower level sunken area. There, there is no intention of having barbecues or outdoor activities. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think the increase in the parking lot space would provide for it, uh, both for allowing people to use it. Where would they park if you're having that event out there? Mm -hmm. And certainly the township has their facility at Almond where these types of events that are being suggested as an a, and I got to say, people, a nefarious idea are already able to and are taking place out at the Almond Center. But no, they're, they're. I just wanted to address the question. Yeah, no, I, I understand. It's just, you know, sometimes when incorrect information is repeated over and over again, it sometimes has the danger of becoming. Okay. As long thing. as the petitioner has the microphone. Um, I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, with respect to the request that uh, overnight parking be prohibited, is that something that that's acceptable by the petitioner? 
I, I don't think that's a problem at all. I don't okay. think there's any intention. Of but not setting a time, but just, you know, the... the well, well the, I know the one thing that had been talked about, and I think even goes on right now, are some of the, the buses that are, that are there, and I think they're already parked there. So, you know, that type of thing, I, I would hope that it would be allowed to be continued, but you certainly can have your, pro, your vehicles there chained off, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep out the rest of the world. Because right. that appears to be what the concern is. Okay. I mean, I, 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 I have, personally, I have mixed feelings about a chain or a gate, because one could argue that becomes an attractive nuisance, and I'm not sure if, if that's a path that we want to go down, and I think it's something we, sh we, sh we should consider. Right, I, and again, uh, uh, 10 o'clock, you know, um, typically we don't get involved in, in making those recommendations um, a, a time as early as that, but for the <coughs> overnight parking so that if the police were to see a, a vehicle that doesn't look like it belongs there, then we know that uh, overnight parking is prohibited. Right, and I think most of the, and, and just to clarify, but the term special event has been thrown around a lot. If you remember the testimony last time was that the types of events that have created the need sometime for additional parking have been primarily training sessions or conferences of the, of the various people who are providing the counseling services or getting some of the resources that are available at the center. And I know when Ms. Velcover was talking about uh, the requirements and the difference between uh, a governmental building and a regular office building. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I think if you, if you think about it, this particular use, while a governmental building, the actual use that goes on there is really more of a typical office building. You have counseling services and services provided for special needs adults at this building. It's not like you have the driver's license office or city hall where people are coming in to pay their water bills or coming to see Ms. Velcover or whoever else in planning and zoning, Mr. Ziegler. It, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, a, a lower intensity use than I would suggest than your typical government office building. Thank you. You know, with respect to uh, neighboring properties, just kind of as a, a procedural we'll aspect, uh, basically, just so the public knows, when petitioners advance a plan, uh, staff and then now the board has to consider that. There may be instances where people in the audience or maybe even people up here can think of a more ideal way of addressing an issue, uh, but that's, that, that's not really the way it's framed up uh, in terms of the work of, the, of this board. This board has to apply the, the zoning regulations and the building regulations to what's presented. I don't know if the petitioner, you know, wants to add anything more about um, neighboring uh, properties, uh, but uh, from the village's perspective, we can't force people to say, uh, give an easement so that they can use property that isn't under their direct control. Um, so. Uh, that may not be a satisfactory answer, answer to some of the um, issues raised by the public, but uh, this board will definitely look at this project to make sure that it complies with our zoning and our building standards uh, and the uh, supplemental information that's been presented to support their request. Um, Mr. Capetta, did you have any follow-up questions? I, I do. I, I, I have some concern. It seemed to me that the board, or you in particular, felt that there wasn't information concerning programs that are run by the township. I may have misunderstood that, but if that's the case, I'd like to cite Exhibit C of my written objections, which were previously filed, where we found a typical flyer from the township, and in there I identified some of the programs. So. I'm not sure what the point of it all was, but I was getting the impression that there was an impression there were no programs or there were minimum programs. And my request was that we quantify it so we don't have this question in the future, that the number of programs and the number of participant days be memorialized as such as they are. This is a special use permit. That's the reason they have special use permits, so that we can condition these kinds of unusual conditions. And this is unusual, undoubtedly. So uh, that's my comment in that regard. 
Also, uh, Mrs. Sullivan is requesting an opportunity somewhere before we conclude tonight for an opportunity to address the board. I, I just call that to your attention so you're aware of it. Well, and, this, and, and, this, this would be the time because after this, we're going to close the floor to the public and then deliberate amongst the members of the zoning. Okay. And, 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 and then the final point, and that's um, what Mr. Ziegler has pointed out. <clears throat> I have a copy of the Village of Gurney Ordinance and at page 6.3 under 01, it says interior side setback, 10 foot unless abutting a residential district, then 30 feet. And then, and that I'm reading right from the ordinance. And then on page 12.6, it indicates in 3A, Buffer yards are located within required year or interior side yard setbacks and must be reserved to the planning of material installation and screening as required by the section. No parking spaces or accessory structures are permitted within the required buffered area. So I don't, I don't think this is the most critical issue we're dealing with tonight, but I pointed out again that I'm still confused by it. And so uh, Mrs. Uh, Sullivan would like to make some comments, I believe. Great. Um, I lost track of the roving microphone. Okay. Ms. Sullivan, if you. Hi, Marilyn Sullivan, 55 South Delaney, Gurney. Um, somebody said something about a six foot fence all around the, along the edge. I'm assuming between my property. What was the six foot fence? I, I there was an eight foot fence. And a six foot fence. I, I believe if you could show the diagram. <clears throat> there will be an eight foot fence along your property line at the north side. Along the west side, above the existing home, there will be a six foot fence. The six foot fence then is, is against my property? The eight foot fence will be against your property now. It will be eight foot at this, your property's here. Will be eight foot here and six foot along here. Behind Anderson's house, it'll be six foot. With landscape, with our plywoods and sort of plywoods. On my side or on your side? Yes, yeah, so I believe on your side. On your side, planting is on your there side. There would be landscaping. Okay, thank you. And then, um, as far as um, the nefarious comments about um, activities going on in that building. Uh, the latest brochure that came out said that um, it's going to be a drop-off center for teens. The senior center has moved over there. Um, there was something about a touch football, uh, baseball, and a cheerleading. Um, I guess where you where you can go to learn how to cheerlead, but none of that's nefarious. It's it's in their brochures. Oh, and the other thing that was still hanging from the last meeting was you were going to look into whether or not um, the parking lot and buying the building was already okay by the township before it even came to the village. We, we didn't get an answer about that either. The minutes from 2011? No, the, the 2011. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we did look at the, the. There was a comment made about some meetings in 2011 that pertained to signage on the property, and and the staff did look at that, so it did not discuss the parking. I, I think yeah, just, just, I think <laughs> the front row. Front row, okay. All right. At, at this time, I'm going to close the floor of the public. Uh, any, uh... May I make one sure. clarification? And I, 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 Fred, is this the exhibit you were talking about? And this is exhibit C that Mr. Petter was referring to. And I, I <coughs> Ms. Sullivan was also referring to a township brochure. These are brochures that talk about all the programs that are available 
under this wing anywhere. And, and all you got to do is take a look at what's in here, and you know you got to have a park around to have this happening. Uh, you, you know, while the offices might be at this location, the events, as we have said, are taking place at other locations, not there. And uh, one of the things Ms. Sullivan said was uh, something about touch football. Uh, you know, drive past the property, you'll see. I mean, there's nothing there to do it. And, and finally, I do want to make one comment. I know that Mr. Capetta uh, asked you to take a look at the fact that some of the trees are taken off the R3 lot, and, and he said that it was previously a part of this request. And I would point out, actually, it was never a part of this request because we were never asking for a change of zoning on that particular part of the property. We were going to effectively put in a park instead of having a single family home there, but we were never going to be changed, my client was never going to be changing the zoning on it. Thank you very much for your Well, and, and just for clarification on the woodland preservation, uh, as Mr. Ziegler's pointed out, uh, that ordinance was passed, I think, about 12 years ago. And um, actually, I wasn't privy to some of the discussion, but the institutional knowledge on that was that if the property had already been subdivided, so on your, if you had a lot that a developer developed, uh, the thought was not to require property owners to get a permit to change those trees. So what the ordinance says, if it's unsub, uh, an unsubdivided parcel, which in the village historically have been bigger, undeveloped lots, for those lots going forward, it was not going to be a prohibition that you couldn't take the trees down, but if they were desirable species of trees, you would have to replace them. So the fact that particular trees got taken down, that's not a violation, um, but uh, because this happens to be an older neighborhood and it was not a platted uh, lot, unbeknownst apparently to a clerical person in the office, um, uh, th I just want everyone to know the village is strictly enforcing that requirement that there be appropriate replacements. The village also does have an arborist, so we're just not, we will uh, be following up. If, if this goes forward uh, from this point on, the village will be very diligent to make sure that the plantings uh, are made sufficient to comply with that ordinance. Uh, again, the Woodland Preservation Ordinance was if there's trees on property, at the end of the day, we still want to have trees in our neighborhoods, but we do understand with development, trees may have to be relocated. So I, did, I do want to make that uh, clarification. Uh, the village uh, does have a professional arborist. We're not relying on petitioners just telling us that that's sufficient. Um, that is an administrative aspect, though. That's not necessarily a zoning issue, but the village will follow up with that, and, and the village uh, was very responsive to the concerns voiced to them um, by the neighbors, and, and we thank you for that um, concern. Um, I have closed the floor to public, Ms. Sullivan, but if you want to get the microphone, I'll allow one more question. No, I, I you, you need to use the microphone, though, please. I just wanted to say, as far as the uh, cheerleading, that isn't being done at that building. It's being done in the, at the MRI center right next door in their backyard. Thank you. All right, uh, any questions or comments from members of the Planning and Zoning Board? I think that, um, I think that Warren Special Rec has made a lot of uh, concessions here to get this done. I understand the idea of having parking across the street, which they're already doing on some occasions, but um, I think that having one driveway has eliminated a lot of the concerns about the bus stop. They've made the concession of possibly putting a bus stop in. Um, also, putting this extra parking in will, in a lot of cases, <coughs> people won't have to be crossing this street in order to get over to the facility. So uh, personally, I think they've done a good job of making some great concessions to make this work for both the community there surrounding it and their own facility. So. Any other questions or comments?
Brian? No? Dave? I was just going to caution that if you do decide to put a condition on the special use permit for the use of the parking lot, um, chaining it off or whatever, that um, we would have to check with the fire department just to make sure where their connections are and that we don't block anything that's actually that they need to get access to. So, you know, you can put the condition on, but we'll have staff will have to check with fire department and it may need to come off or. Okay. Um, can I ask if that condition is on any other parking lots in that area? Well, that's a question for staff, I yeah. I don't know that it's on any other parking lot that we have. I, I can't even I'm think of any examples across town that... Mm -mm. that that's what I'm... Yeah. I don't know of any parking lot that we have that condition on. Okay. I don't see anything wrong with putting a sign up, no overnight parking, but I'm not in agreement with chaining off the parking lot. I agree. I don't, I don't I agree. agree. It's a good idea. I, I, I do like the idea of no right turn as you're exiting the parking lot. Yes, I agree. And that needs to be added. Nice. Assume the township is okay with that? Okay. Um, is anybody ready to advance a motion? Uh, I, we're going to handle this in separate motions, correct? The uh, zoning and the special use? Yeah, two motions. Two motions. Okay. So they've got motions drafted for both. Okay. Um, so I will move to recommend approval of Warren Township's petition as amended to rezone the property generally located at the northeast corner of Oglesby Avenue and Delaney Road and legally described in said amended petition from R3 single family residential to O1 restricted office. And you're specifically talking about that 30 foot strip or whatever it is, right? Correct, as legally described in their amended petition. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Mr. McFarland. Any discussion? This is just clarification on the, that footage, the distance. It's 74.9. It's about 73. 73. I'm sorry. 73.9. Okay. Okay. I, I misspoke. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But it's it's as drawn is, is what we're trying to say here. Okay. Okay. Second, no discussion. Roll call, please. Bow. Yes. Crawford. Aye. McFarland. Aye. Nordentop. Aye. Path. Aye. Pasiak. Aye. And Sula. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, in dealing with the special use permit. Okay. <coughs> so I'll move to recommend approval of Warren Township's petition as amended for a special use permit to allow the expansion of a government office use for the property generally located at the northeast corner of Oglesby Avenue and Delaney Road and legally described in said amended petition subject to the following conditions. One, that any parking lot structure on the site be set back a minimum of 10 feet from the south property line and 16 feet from the north property line that a six foot tall opaque solid wood fence be installed west of the property lot expansion and an eight foot opaque solid wood fence be constructed on the north side of the parking lot expansion. Three, that the site be used only for parking associated with the government building located directly to the east and that no building expansion can be accommodated on the site. Four, that the project be constructed substantially in accordance with the revised landscaping plan and the revised lighting plan submitted by the township as part of its amended petition. Five, that the property legally described in the amended petition shall be legally consolidated with the township property located to the east. And six, that no right turn signage shall be installed at the exit of the reconfigured parking lot. Second. And uh, comment overnight parking pro yeah, uh, prohibition as well. that we add one more overnight <coughs> parking side as well. Okay. And I'll amend it to include condition seven uh, that the parking lot shall install steinage uh, prohibiting overnight parking. Okay. And, and just to just to clarify what, what we're saying here, at the end of the day, there's going to be two lots. There's going to be a, a shortened R3 lot and a lengthened O1 lot. I agree with the amendment. Okay. Second. Second. 
Any other discussion or comment? Uh, roll call, please. Powell? Yes. Crawford? Aye. McFarland? Aye. Nurentoff? Aye. Half? Aye. Pasak? Aye. And Sula? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, just so for the benefit of the public, uh, we are a, a recommending body to the Village Board. Um, the Village Board has the ultimate authority in terms of uh, yay or nay on this particular project. Um, I encourage you to follow listserv to um, see when it would be um, on the Village Board agenda. Um, and once again, I thank the Township for uh, the strides that they made to, to improve the overall project. Um, next meeting date on the calendar is September 21st. Tracy, do we have anything? We have a public hearing. We do have a public hearing, okay. Um, motion to adjourn would be in order? So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I hope.